welcome, folks. My dad is out. I'm filling in for the hour, and we got Apple rocking in this afternoon to higher price. That's carrying the markets a little bit higher right now. We got the S and P's positive by five. You're trading at five thousand eighty-five. You see the lows made it about five thousand sixty-seven, and boy, the market gets a gift today. As Apple not going to be in the car business, they're not going to be employing two thousand people in that division. Uh, and they're not going to be burning thousands of, excuse me, billions of dollars that that endeavor has been going on since 2014, 10 years. Finally, they see the writing on the wall. We'll get over into it. NASDAQ 100, you're up by a quarter percent, above 18,000 yet again, 18,018. Dow in the negative territory, not getting quite the lift with the rest of the market. Dow off 132 points, just below 39,000 right now, 38,984. And you got the Russell up by 1.2 percent. So let's just get right into it, man. Apple shares. There's a run for you. You're up nine tenths percent. You're up a buck sixty. You ran more than four solid dollars. That news coming out just prior to 2 p.m. Eastern time. You're up to 183.92. 179.56 was the low at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You see a dip a bit lower. It's still one minute bar. I pulled up to illustrate the type of move. Didn't take long. Within 60 seconds, the market said, that's okay. We will stop spending that money because that is a long term endeavor in terms of what they're going after and long term endeavors when you're spending money think about it when a, a company purchases another company right it's a long term endeavor in the long term it's going to pay off in the short term though they're spending capital and that's what they've been doing and the news hits 2 p.m eastern time execs tell staff to wind down work on the project titan employees on some of the car teams are going to move to the ai division reprioritizing what is at stake right now as apple uh, reprioritizing in a big fashion. EVs, they are out. AI, they are in. 2,000 employees. They surprised them with uh, an internal memo, I believe it was. Uh, yeah. The decision was shared by the COO, Jeff Williams, and Kevin Lynch, the v vice president in charge of the effort. They told staffers that the project will begin winding down and that many employees on the car team known as the Special Projects Group, or SPG, will be shifted to the Artificial Intelligence Division under Executive John Jane Andrea. Those employees will focus on generative AI, an increasingly key priority for the company. Can't understate that. Uh, they also have a bunch of hardware engineers and car designers. That's a little bit of a different story, of course. They can't quite shift them to generative, generative AI. They might be able to apply for other jobs in the other Apple teams. Nonetheless, there will be layoffs, unclear how many. Um, but yeah, that endeavor stops in an instant. Now, some of the points they talk about here, right? They finalized that decision in the recent weeks. It comes just a month after Bloomberg reported that they were at a quote unquote break, uh, make or break point, okay? They were thinking about pushing it to 2028 and then reducing the self-driving specs from level four to level two, whatever that means, all right? It's just less, less, I mean, they wanted a self-driving limo, man. And at some point in this, they're talking about, yeah. Um, they had some grand ambitions, man. Let me slide up. They originally were thinking about, yeah, here we go. They started working in 2014. They set their sights on a fully autonomous electric vehicle with a limousine-like interior and voice-guided navigation. They didn't think would be where we are in 2024. I think they bought some of Elon's Kool-Aid, man, in terms of Tesla having a self-driving fleet of vehicles coming at you within a couple years, right? I think all of that kind of caught wave because even a company like Apple went for that endeavor in 2024 when nowhere near where they thought that they would be on that car comp, um, endeavor. Most recently, they were looking at a car priced at around $100,000 but inflation creeps in. And what were they worried about? They're worried about margins. How can they make as much as they want, even selling a car at $100,000? And they're probably right. When you get the average vehicle selling for $50,000, Apple's gonna be a premium product, that's for sure. It had been thrown around that they were gonna work with other car companies, right? They weren't just gonna create a car company out of nowhere, but it was gonna be an Apple vehicle. But they were concerned about the margins that they are typically used to. And they're probably right. Man, the car company is not like selling air the way they sell cloud space, et cetera. Uh, and they continue to invest, of course. Actually, not even that much when you think about it. $113 billion for research and development over the past five years. Annual growth rate of 16%. I say not that much when the company is valued at $3 trillion almost. Uh, and they recently launched that Vision Pro. Yeah, so... Uh, nonetheless, man, that gives a lift in the market. You got Apple shares. You were basically approaching 180 when that news came out. You're trading at 183 right now. That puts a lift in the NASDAQ 100. But some correlation there. 
you were at one o'clock here, you caught a low, and the Apple news comes out at two o'clock when you're trading about 17,963. So that gives even the NASDAQ 100. You were still slightly in the red when that news hit. It's carried the market back up to where we were this morning, uh, slightly higher prices for the NASDAQ. We jump around to some of the other tech companies. Amazon down about six tenths percent right now. We jump over to Microsoft shares down about one tenth percent. You had Elon out there. Always nice to have less competition in the market, right? You got Elon out there uh, commending uh, Apple in their endeavor to wrap that up, some kind of a tweet, whatever it is. Tesla shares right now, you're up 58 cents, trading at 199.98. And I think we got a caller. Let me jump over. We have Costa from Boston. Costa, good afternoon. What can we do for you, man? How are you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for calling. How's beautiful Boston? I heard you guys are going to get some oh, lovely, lovely weather up there for late February pretty beautiful. soon. Yes, it's beautiful weather. Nice. Yes. Enjoy it, man. February. We're, we're getting a little hot in Florida, but we got it made, of course. But uh, what are we looking at? We looking at a little gold, Costa? New one, NEM. I bought it at 33 and a third about a week okay. ago. Okay. A week ago. The bottom? Say that last comment again for me one more time. Wait. Where's the bottom on this? Boy, you know, it's interesting how these gold companies have really underperformed, it, you know, even versus the gold contract, right? Um, you know, this is a tough looking chart for Newmont, man, even versus some of the other gold equities, Costa. Um, you know, I'm not sure. It looks like they had their numbers on February 22nd. This equity was trading at 33. It comes lower. And you've crept lower to 29.84, and you know even you back it up. February 20th, this equity was at 34 dollars. You're trading under 30 right now. I'm just going back February 20th, one week ago, right? Just for context, you go back to February 20th in the gold contract, and you were at, you know, 20 dollars lower, 15 dollars lower, at least at the same price. Um, I'm not sure, man. That that does not look like a, a stock with strength as it continues to trade lower. You know, December 27th, you're at 42 bucks. You're at 29.85. If anything, I'd try and keep your your stop your your stops tight right now, um, because you see the slides. I know you know, man, but you see the slide, right? We were just at 42. All of a sudden, we're at 38 like that. And the gold contract hasn't done that type of a move. So they are dealing with some woes right now um, in that in that equity business. And Newmont in particular looks a little weak, especially even versus some of the other equities, Costa. So be careful on that one. Find yourself a stop, man. Pick a stop. You can always get back in. Um, we got some volatility. We got an upside coming, but put that stop in there, okay? Okay. All right. Appreciate the call, man. Take care. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with our man Basil Chapman. And bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving.